Uh, this one was sent along to us by email. This is in regards to, again, following up on that issue of pride and not uh, wanting someone to think that they're right in their own eyes. The reverse stat is kind of difficult. Uh, the question comes from Jeffrey, and he wants to know how to better understand humility in Christ, because it seems like if I look at myself and think that I'm worthless as opposed to great, I'm still being proud because I'm focusing on myself. So what actually is humility? Is it self invalidated? Is it self-deprecation? Is it self-aggrandizement? Or is it not self at all? Right. Um, C.S. Lewis, I think, gave the best definition of humility. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It is thinking of yourself less. So the problem with pride is that it's self-focus. I'm thinking about myself. And notice, by the way, when Adam and Eve fall in the garden in Genesis 3, and they start thinking about themselves, they engage in narcissism, it doesn't lead them to be proud or arrogant. It, in, it actually enables them to be shameful. So actually, when we look at ourselves, when we really investigate ourselves, the bend will traditionally actually be more towards shame than it will be towards narcissism and selfishness. So be careful of that. There are two sides of the very same coin, and they are poison from the very same well. So either side of the coin, you are engaging in pride and self-delusion. Which is why, by the way, so many people in our culture are struggling with depression and anxiety because they've been taught from a young age that if you want to figure out who you are, you just got to look deep, deep, deep inside of yourself and you'll figure it out. This is why we have pride parades. This is why we have all these things, self-authenticity, self-love. The message is that if you think about yourself, if you look inside, you will figure it out and you will be a better person. But the more people look inside, the more shame-ridden they get, the more anxious they get, the more depressed they get, and the more aimless they feel. You will never figure out who you are by just looking inside of yourself. Because, as the Proverbs say, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end therein lies death. Right? The more you look in, the less insight you're going to achieve. And by the way, as a counselor, people come to me, and that's all they really want to do. They just want to narcissistically look into themselves. Right? They're not actually there to get better. They are there to just investigate themselves because they think they're so dang fascinating. Uh, by doing that, you're not actually, again, you're not going to grow because you're not listening to what the counselor is saying. You're not doing what the Proverbs say as to actually investigating what someone's telling you in humility. You are instead just looking for validation of what you already believe, right? You just want affirmation. Now, when it comes to humility, how do we achieve that then? If that's what narcissism is and that's how you achieve narcissism, well, then how do you achieve humility? Now, this is what makes the virtue of humility so difficult because it's the only one that you really can't think your way out of. Because if you try not to be proud, well, you're still thinking about yourself. You're thinking about yourself more in order to not be proud. So in order to not think about yourself, you have to engage your mind or orient it towards something greater than yourself. This is why the Bible speaks so highly of worship. One of the things that we're doing in worship is we're orienting our minds and our bodies to be in awe of God. And awe, wonder, praise, is actually the only stance a human being can be in where we've truly forgotten ourselves. This is one of the things that great artists throughout the ages have spoken about of why the arts are so important. Um, Irene Murdoch, again, not a Christian, uh, atheist philosopher, she was talking about having a really rough day and struggling with a lot of anxieties, and all of a sudden a bird flies over and actually goes right by her face and lands in a position where she could see the sunset perfectly and the shadow of its wings, and she's just in awe. And she's like, for that brief moment, I was radically unselfed, and by becoming radically unselfed, I became more of myself. And I love that line because what she's saying is she found identity not through looking in, but through looking out. I want nature to reflect to me what I am. I want community and others to reflect to me what I am. I don't want to just hold a mirror up to my own mirror and just see an infinite regression of self. That's what she understood, and that's what she figured out. Art, beauty, these things enable us to be unselfed. It enables us to get out of ourselves and to think about something else for a change. Right? So when we engage in beauty, that's what we do. And since God is the ultimate object of beauty and glory, he is the ultimate object that will unself you. So focusing on him and worshiping him will do that. But there are other methods of doing that as well. The second thing is I need to focus on others. So instead of, again, looking into myself, look out. Right? The opposite of pride is actually not humility. Humility is just the absence of pride. The opposite of pride is love. 
right? If I'm seeking the betterment of others and I'm seeking to be invested in their lives and caring about what's going on in them, I am not thinking about myself in those moments. I have become distanced from my own internal dialogue that's self-deprecating. So those are some helpful hints. Look at beauty, look at God, look at your neighbor. Seek to be out of yourself as much as you can.